Good evening, and welcome to tonight's virtual information session sponsored by Davis and Davy Community College. Please be reminded that tonight's information session is being broadcast live via Zoom and Facebook, and we will be recording this session for future reference of the broadcast. Tonight's information session will highlight Davis and Davy Community College's international studies and studying abroad. We are asking that you post all questions in the chat box and at the conclusion of tonight's presentation, we will answer all questions. We are very fortunate and happy to have Ms. Suzanne LaVenture to be our guest speaker and tell us about all the information that we need to know about international studies. Davis and David Community College is one of the few universities that has any type of international studies program. So with that being said, let me turn everything over to Ms. Suzanne LaVenture. Thank you, William. It's my pleasure to be here tonight and talk to you about international education. I fell in Louvre with international education a long, long time ago when I studied abroad in college. So here you see a picture of the Louvre which um, as you probably know, is the world's biggest art museum and it's in Paris. And Davidson Davy students will have a chance to go to Paris this summer and see the Louvre. Um, but I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. So first, I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, Davidson Davy. And as William mentioned, we are one of the only community colleges in the country that has a robust international education program. And in fact, we are nationally recognized. This past year, we won the Senator Paul Simon Award for Comprehensive Internationalization. And so you can see there the list of winners this year. Um, the prize almost always goes to big universities, and we were the only small community college who won this award. So it really is a huge achievement. And it's because we have so many international education opportunities available for students. And so that's what I'm gonna tell you about tonight and hopefully you will take advantage of one or all of them. So uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is the International Club. This is the very easiest way to get involved on campus. Uh, the International Club is for international students and domestic students. We're all global citizens, world citizens, so anyone can join. The way you get, the way you join is to go um, to the Storm Life website and request to join the International Club and we will grant you access. You see some pictures here of different activities. We have regular meetings. We have uh, fun events on campus, like the picture on the right is when we celebrated Chinese New Year a couple of years ago. On the left, you see some of the outings we've gone on. Um, and it's just a really great organization, super easy to join. All you have to do is say, I wanna be a member and you're a member. Another way we internationalize the campus at Davidson Davy is by bringing international students and scholars. So you don't really have to do anything because we are bringing the world to you. So this year we have three Fulbright scholars with us. We have Marie Rebecca on the left, she's from France and she's a Fulbright language teaching assistant. And she's here for a year, she teaches French classes. She hosts the conversation hour we have every Wednesday at 1230. She contributes to International Night, she's super fun. And we uh, hope you'll come by and meet Marie. In the middle, we have Veronica Pellegrino and she is our Fulbright Scholar in residence from Argentina. So he, she's here for a year teaching Spanish and she does a lot of the same extra activities that Marie does. Um, so you can come by and see them in the International Ed Center, which by the way, is in the G building on the north side, offices 139 through 142. And last but not least, we have Jason Finnerty. Now, Jason was a, a language teaching assistant on our campus several years ago from Ireland and he's moved to North Carolina now. He married a North Carolinian and he is back teaching Irish language classes for us as well as a virtual study abroad class to Ireland. And so I'll talk about that in a minute. But so you have the chance of being in classes with these people or having them teach you. And that is another super easy way to learn more about the world is by engaging with international scholars. 
Here are some of our international students. You may not know that we bring international students to our campus. Again, this is something that not many community colleges do. On the left, you have our students from France who are here for this semester. We have Vince and Giovanni and Charlene and Carl, and they're from the Epita School of Engineering in Paris. And they're from the same school where you will have the chance to study abroad this summer for three weeks. When I get to that slide, I'll tell you more about it. On the right, you have some of our Tunisian students along with Ayana, who was uh, our work study in the International Ed Office a couple of years ago. Most of them have gone back to Tunisia because they were here in a one-year program. But here, Thea on the left, he came back. He wanted to pursue another degree. So he's currently on campus. You may run into him. So if you don't know where Tunisia is, you can Google it. Actually, you don't have to Google it, I'll tell you. It's in North Africa, so it's a really cool place. And uh, I, I would encourage you to befriend these cool students. And then when they go home, you can have a free place to stay in France and Tunisia when you start traveling the world. So this hopefully will play, it's a little video. So the next thing I'm gonna talk to you about is our Scholars of Distinction program. And I think the video, whoops, well, describe it best if I can get it to work. I saw the arrow a second ago, but now it just, oh, here it is. Let's go. Let me know if you can't hear it. Have you ever wanted to explore the world outside your immediate surroundings? Then the Scholars of Global Distinction program might be for you. This program is a collaboration between UNC Worldview and several community colleges. It offers opportunities that prepare you to become an engaged global citizen. You'll take globalized courses, attend international events on campus, and have a global experience, either through study abroad, virtual exchange, or a local project. But don't just take it from me. Listen to what these global scholars had to say about the program. Hello, my name is Nancy Garcia Villa. My name is Davin Blago. Hello, this is Mohammed Fizan. My name is Charles Wright. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Dion Scott. I joined the Scholars of Global Distinction because I have a passion for learning about different cultures. It was something that I could expand my knowledge of cultures that I hadn't known before. Global, historical, cultural, and political information. A more inclusive and diverse space in the classroom. I highly recommend it. There are plenty of opportunities, great people to meet. As a global scholar, you'll learn an academic distinction that will enhance your ability to transfer to the university of your choice. You'll also receive a Certificate of Recognition from Worldview at UNC Chapel Hill. And it's a great competitive edge for your resume. This program is offered at many community colleges. So are you ready to explore your place in the global community? The world is waiting for you. Join the Scholars of Global Distinction program today. So, so what the video didn't tell you is that Davidson Davy created the Scholars of Global Distinction program. We began our program in the fall of 2013. And as you can see, it has now expanded to over 30 other colleges in the state and even in South Carolina. We do work closely with uh, Worldview at UNC Chapel Hill to run this program. And it is something that will make a huge difference on your transcript, on your resume, when you're going to transfer to a university or when you're seeking employment. It's a wonderful, wonderful program. And the way you earn this, dis uh, this distinction is um, by completing the program requirements, which are taking 15 credit hours in courses designated as having globally intensive content. And you do need to make an A or a B in those classes the rest of your classes, your grades don't really matter. Um, and there are two kinds of global courses. There are courses that are considered inherently global and those count regardless of who the instructor is. So that would be foreign language, world history, world geography, world religion, international business. There's a whole list of those on our website. And then there are other courses where certain instructors have globalized their class, but others have not. So for example, English 111. English 111, you may end up in a globalized version of the class or you may end up in a non-globalized version. So if you're a global scholar, you wanna make sure you take it with an instructor who has infused international content into the course for it to count in the program. 
The second component is attendance at a total of eight international passport events. So ideally you would just complete two a semester and you would be done in two years. You can do them all in one semester, it doesn't really matter. This right here is a passport event. So if you're here now, this counts as one. You only have seven left. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, the third thing is to have a global experience. So we would love for every single global scholar to study abroad, but we know that's not possible. So we do have some other options. So there are all kinds of different local projects you could do. You can participate in a virtual exchange. We have plenty of options if you are not able to study abroad. So you do not have to travel in order to be a global scholar. And then the last piece is completing an e-portfolio that talks about uh, your participation and growth uh, that you've gained through the global learning opportunities. So you'll just have, it's, it's, we use a Google site and you'll just have a page talking about your passport events and a page talking about your classes and a page talking about your global experiences. So we have a template set up, so it's super easy to modify. So we used to have a capstone presentation, but we found out that a lot of students weren't joining the program because they didn't wanna to have to give a speech. So we changed it to the ePortfolio. So now you have no reason at all not to become a scholar of global distinction. So here are the passport events I was talking about. We offer, gosh, about 30 of them every single semester, more if you count the ones we repeat every single week. You can see our current, a piece of our current schedule right here. So here on February 15th is the fall in Louvre with international education. Tomorrow we have actually three passport events. So we're having World Wednesday. That's where our history instructor, Gerald Bosch, talks about current events. So if you wanna know what's going on with Ukraine, you could come to that tomorrow. We have decided to have it face-to-face -face and virtual. So if you're on campus and you wanna to come to the Reich Auditorium at nine, that's fine. We will also be um, Zooming it. So you, could, you have a choice there. At 10 o'clock, we're having back-to-back -back passport events tomorrow. We are uh, having a session on tight and loose cultures based on the Hidden Brain podcast. So that's always um, an interesting topic. And then at 12.30, we're having the Culture Cafe. So this is the event we have every single week where our Fulbright scholars pick a topic and they talk about it and we have coffee and tea and snacks and you can just come hang out in the International Ed Center and eat snacks and listen to the Fulbright scholars. So every Wednesday that we're not virtual from 12.30 to 1.30, you're welcome to come to the Culture Cafe. On Thursday, we have an event from UNC Worldview, a, a very prominent professor at Chapel Hill is gonna speak to us about refugee stories. I'm sure that's gonna be a fascinating session. On Friday, we're having a book discussion of Trevor Noah's Born a Crime uh, live from Africa. We have partners at EDU Africa, and uh, this event is coming live from Cape Town. So we, we did this event last year, and I can tell you it's spectacular. So feel free to join us then. The next week, we're having a, another session from EDU Africa. This is about reducing human wildlife conflict in Kenya, another live event, pretty cool. And then uh, last but not least for this first eight week session on Wednesday, March 2nd, we're having a whole entire passport event dedicated to the summer school in Paris program. So our partners at APITA in France will be joining us live for that event. So there are plenty of passport events. They're on different days at different times. It is really easy to get eight of them to be a global scholar. You're also welcome to attend passport events. If you're not a global scholar, if you're just interested, Anyone and everyone is welcome to attend. So this here is just one of the examples of an alternate project. If you can't study abroad as a global scholar, we're having a virtual Ireland class. And the name of it is Global Perspectives Through the Narratives of Ireland. So this is a class who was created by Neve Hamill. Uh, she's our partner at the Institute of Study Abroad Ireland. And we've traveled to Ireland with her year after year and she is fabulous. And she's put together this virtual study abroad program where you watch videos that she's made where she goes all over Ireland and talks about different topics. You respond to her via video rather than having to write or type anything out. You just, you know, video yourself on your phone and send her your thoughts and reflections. And then you meet once a week with Jason, our other Irishman, 
um, to talk about what you read and learned and just sort of have a little discussion. So you could do this instead of studying abroad for your global scholar, global experience. Or if you're just interested in doing this and don't wanna be a global scholar, you can do this all by yourself. It costs $49. For global scholars who take the class, if you complete the class, we will reimburse your money. So it is free, but it's also open to the public as well. And that's just one of the examples of kind of local program options we have for global scholars. So this is just one last picture of global scholars from last year. This was, you know, the year of COVID. I think this was like the first week we were on campus was at the end of the year. And we managed to have a little celebration where we gave everyone their global scholars stoles. So when you graduate, you get to wear this special regalia. The, the designation goes on your transcript. You get a certificate from Worldview at Chapel Hill. You get a certificate from Davidson Davy and a letter from our president. So. It really is a wonderful program. Students who do it, they, they say the best thing about it is that it's fun. So, you know, you learn a lot, you meet people, and it's something that's gonna look great on your resume for the rest of your life. So we definitely encourage you to join. And the way you join is um, by going to the website and there's an apply now button. Uh, I can show you later at the end of the presentation if you like, but it's not hard to find on the Davidson Davy website. Okay, I have one more little video. This one's gonna talk to you about study abroad. And I will warn you that this was made back when we were Davidson County Community College. So this is a DCCC video. Jared is probably gonna be mad at me for showing it, but we don't have an updated version, but here it goes. Or not. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. There we go. Have you ever wanted to study abroad but had something preventing you from doing it? Maybe you've thought, I can't afford it, or I've never traveled by plane, or even I'm nervous about leaving the US. The good news is at Davidson County Community College, you can overcome those barriers. We'll walk you through every step of the process from getting your passport to talking about the experience so that you stand out to potential employers. We offer scholarships and a flexible payment plan to help offset the costs. We'll also teach you about your destination in a study abroad class so you feel prepared to travel overseas. And at DCCC, the possibilities are endless. On our website, you can choose where you want to go. Come with us to Costa Rica, Argentina, South Africa, Ireland, and more. Most trips are open to the community, so tell your friends, grandparents, cousins, whomever. If you're ready to experience life in a new place, then nothing should hold you back. So even though our name has changed, everything else remains the same. We know that a lot of times community college students have not even necessarily thought about studying abroad. Um, we know there are family obligations, work obligations, you don't have a lot of time, you don't have that much money. So all of our programs are very short. Our longest program is three weeks long. Uh, they range in length from nine days to three weeks. The prices are very good for what you get. The experiences are amazing educational opportunities. They're run by people who know what they're doing. We've done this for years. We have all kinds of policies and risk management procedures in place. This is, you know, we can't guarantee that nothing will ever go wrong, but this is probably the best and easiest and safest way to travel is through a study abroad program at the college. So um, COVID has been an issue, obviously, for the past couple of years. So we've been shuffling around our programs and postponing them. And we're finally ready to announce our upcoming schedule that hopefully will actually run. Uh, the first one of those is in South Africa. And this looks like it's definitely going to go. Uh, the State Department sets travel advisories for every country in the world. And most countries are currently at level four, which means do not travel. That's the highest level. Uh, South Africa recently moved to level three, which means we are allowed to go there. We have wonderful partners, as I mentioned, 
South Africa is our only service learning program. So in addition to doing all kinds of cool cultural activities, you'll also be volunteering in the townships there. Um, I got to go on a site visit in 2019 and it is amazing, amazing, amazing. One of my favorite places I've ever been and I've been lots of places. Um, if you want to go to South Africa, you kind of need to tell me today or tomorrow. Uh, we are buying the plane tickets now. And uh, so we're gonna be nailing that down, but it is still technically open uh, if you can you know, commit like within 24 or 48 hours. The other trip I'm gonna talk to you is about Paris. I've said I was gonna talk about this and I finally am. We have a partnership with EPITA, the School of Engineering that is outside of Paris, where our, our French students are from right now. And we have signed a, an exchange agreement. So their students were able to come to Davidson Davy for the spring semester tuition free. And we are able to send up to 15 students to Paris for their three week summer program for $1,000 off the tuition per student. So rather than costing 2,400 euros plus airfare, it's gonna only cost 1,600 euros plus airfare. So 1,600 euros is currently around $1,875 for three weeks in Paris, which includes lodging, food, activities, classes, everything. So I did have a couple of slides with photos. So this is um, of South Africa. As I said, I got to go on a site visit in 2019 and my family got to come with me. It was kind of an amazing opportunity there. Um, so this is at the Cape of Good Hope, which is the most southwestern point of the African continent. So Cape Town is located on the southwest tip, but you can drive a little farther down and you're at the very edge of the African continent. And you can take a little cable car up that mountain. There are wild baboons that run around there. It is pretty amazing and stunningly beautiful. Um, on the left, you see a picture of a class of four-year-olds at Kailicha, which is one of the largest townships in Cape Town. Uh, this is one of the possible volunteering opportunities EDU Africa will match you up with the kind of service learning you want to do. So if you want to work with kids, you can. If you want to work with old people, you can. If you want to work with animals, you can. If you want to do sports or computers or business, uh, they have all kinds of opportunities that they will help guide you. So you're doing something that really fits, you know, specifically within your career goals. And the last photo on the bottom right is um, at Aquila Game Reserve. The last two days of the program are a safari at Aquila. And that's a photo I took with my iPhone. Uh, so you go out in this big Jeep and you get to see rhinos and zebras and lions and elephants and giraffes and all the animals and it's pretty awesome. Um, a couple of other things I, I didn't mention is that while you are in Cape Town, you'll get to go to Robben Island and see the prison cell where Nelson Mandela was in prison for 27 years. So that's pretty amazing. We didn't get to go because the winds were too rough the day. So that day, so I'm hoping to go back sometime. Um, there are all kinds of cultural activities that are just fantastic. Uh, if you're interested in South Africa at all, I would say go for it. So here for the Paris program, I already mentioned, I don't have any photos of people being there because this was our first year of our agreement with EPITA. So their students came here for the first time and we'll be sending students there for the first time. But you know, that's a pretty remarkable deal that for 1875, you can spend three weeks in Paris. You do have to pay for your own airfare. And I'll also point out that this is the only one of our programs that is not faculty led. So every other program, you're gonna have two faculty or staff members that go along with a group of students and you spend your time together and you follow the itinerary and all that kind of thing. For the Paris program, you're going, I mean, kind of on your own, but chances are there'll be more than one Davidson Davies student uh, who's going. I know at least two that have committed so far. So we can help you arrange your airfare to go together. But the only thing to know is that you're not gonna be with a faculty or staff member from the college. But yeah, here, you know, what can I say about Paris? Probably the most famous city in the world. You have the Arc de Triomphe, the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, it's just a beautiful, wonderful city, the City of Lights, not to mention all the great food and wine. 
So for fall break, we have two trips, which we have postponed from spring break to fall break. So we'll be going to Italy. And in Italy, you'll be going to the cities of Florence and Rome. Or you could also choose Ireland. And this is the program that we've run for the most years. It has 100% success rate. Every single person who has ever gone to Ireland loves it. Um, it's an amazing place, also beautiful. Um, let me show you the photos. So this is uh, these are some photos from the college's last trip to Greece and Italy. I think the photo on the left is actually in Greece at the Parthenon, but the photos on the right are in Italy. You see our students at the Roman Colosseum and you see what pizza looks like in Italy. It's very delicious, I can assure you. So you'll spend time in Rome, go to the Colosseum, the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel. Uh, you'll see all kinds of amazing things. You'll get to eat wonderful, wonderful food, lots of gelato. You'll go to the city of Florence, which is the birthplace of the Renaissance. You'll get to see Michelangelo's David and the Duomo Cathedral there, all kinds of art. Florence is a wonderful city. And here are some photos from Ireland. I mentioned uh, Dr. Neve Hamill. She runs the Institute of Study Abroad Ireland and we've been taking students there since 2015. Ireland is a super easy first international trip because it's English speaking. It's really not that far away compared to a lot of places. It's a six hour flight from New York or Boston. You stay in a little town called Bundoran, which is on the West Coast in County Donegal. It's also the surf capital of Ireland, in case you didn't know there was such a thing. And you will get the chance to go surfing. So here are the students getting their lesson on how to surf. Uh, it is normally cold when we go in March over spring break. Hopefully it'll be a little warmer when we go in October. Um, another thing we do every single year is go into Derry in Northern Ireland. So Derry is a city that just celebrated the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, where the British army shot a bunch of unarmed Irish teenagers and killed 14, 17 people. Um, you too wrote a song about it in case you've ever heard Sunday Bloody Sunday. So you go to Derry, you learn about the troubles in Ireland. Um, you see all the murals that were painted. Uh, you also walk around the medieval part of the city. So, so that's really fascinating. You're technically going to two countries when you go to Ireland because you're going to the Republic of Ireland in the South and then to Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. So when you're in Northern Ireland, you'll have to use British pounds instead of euros, but it's not very difficult. Uh, it's a fantastic trip. Here's Henry, one of our students sitting in the wishing chair in Bundorn. So if you like castles and fog and Game of Thrones was filmed here, lots of parts of that, um, you know, Ireland is the place for you. If you like stories and myths and legends and beer, Ireland is the place for you. So for our spring, spring break trips for 2023, we are hopefully going to Japan, which has been postponed a couple of times and to Costa Rica. We have taken students to Japan a couple of times in the past. Michelle Williamson is leading the trip for the third time, so she is, she is very experienced. These are some photos of the last time we took students to Japan at the shrines and the temples and, uh, you know, getting to sample Japanese food. And, and apparently in Japan, they have vending machines everywhere that are filled with all kinds of strange things like warm creamed corn and you know, random things. So that was pretty interesting for the students. So Japan is always super popular and tends to fill up. And even though we keep postponing it, uh, I am very hopeful that by spring of 2023, this program will be able to run. And uh, last but not least is Costa Rica. This is a trip that's gonna be led by Allison Pierce, one of our biology instructors. And the class that's going to go along with this trip is a biology 140 course, which is environmental biology. So Costa Rica is super ecologically diverse. They're diverse. They're known for ecotourism. There are all kinds of plants and animal species there. You'll go all over the country. You'll go to the cloud forest and the rainforest and the beaches, and you'll see the turtles hatching. 
uh, yoga zip lining and white water rafting. So it is kind of a adventure tour. So if you like physical activity and adventure, Costa Rica might be the place for you. Okay, so those are our upcoming study abroad uh, trips. And I also wanted to mention um, a grant we got this year where we are able to offer 25 scholarships uh, to get a US passport. And the criteria are that you are a first year student and that you are a Pell recipient. So as part of, a as part of your financial aid package, you receive a Pell grant. If you meet those criteria and you would like to get a scholarship so that you can obtain your US passport, let me know. We've been looking for students. We've had um, 11 students who applied, who actually followed through with getting their passport and we were able to reimburse them. So if you would like a passport free, it lasts 10 years, um, just email me and I will nominate you to receive one of these scholarships. So a lot of times students talk about how, you know, they, they can't afford to study abroad, they would like to. But you know, I've really found that that is not the biggest obstacle for most of our students. I really think the biggest obstacle is mindset. The idea that you never really considered it, it's a little scary because you've never done it. Uh, you might be afraid to fly, you might be afraid of COVID, you, know, you might just be afraid of going somewhere new and, and experiencing the unknown, or, or maybe you don't see the value in it because again, it's not something you've ever done. Every single person who has ever studied abroad will tell you that it transformed their life. It totally changes you. Even though our programs are short, it will forever change the way you view things, the way you view yourself. And I think that's kind of the bottom line is that it's not, I mean, you obviously learn about other people, but you really learn about yourself. Um, so you, you can't really understand yourself unless you understand the context and how you are shaped by your own culture and by seeing another culture that helps you understand the, the factors that have formed you into the person that you are. So, like I said, money, you can come up with the money if you really, really want to. First of all, we do have scholarships. So through uh, the DDC Foundation, through TRIO, through SGA, we have a process where you can apply for a partial scholarship for your program. We are just opening the new round for Ireland and Italy. So I think we updated that today on the website. Uh, so you should be able to apply right now. The deadline is May 15th to get a partial scholarship to go to Ireland or Italy. There is also something called the Gilman Scholarship, which is a federal scholarship. And the purpose of the Gilman is to diversify the kinds of students who study abroad. So I am the typical student who studies abroad. I'm a white female. I majored in Spanish. I went to a liberal arts college. And that's the traditional person who studies abroad. So Gilman is looking to diversify that. They're looking for males. Um, interestingly, females study abroad two to one over males. So if you're a guy, this is one scholarship where you have an advantage because you are underrepresented in study abroad. If you are a first generation college student, if your parents did not graduate with a four year degree, that's a factor they're looking for. If you're from a low income household, if you're a veteran, if you have a disability, if you're LGBTQ, if you are a racial minority, if you are a non-traditionally aged student, if you're a community college student, if you're any of those things, that is what the Gilman is looking for. We had two students win it this past year to go to Japan. So they each got more than the cost of their trip from the Gilman. Now, I think this might've been an unusual year because of COVID. But um, they both applied to Japan and they both got a $5,000 scholarship. So that's kind of amazing. So if you get more money than the cost of your trip, good for you. So let's say you can't count on a scholarship because they are competitive. So you may not get one. Does that mean you can't go? No, there are still ways to find the money. The first way that uh, sometimes students don't think of first off is getting a job. 
Um, this is like historically the time on earth where it is the easiest to get a job in the entire history of the United States. I didn't phrase that well, but that is a fact. There are tons and tons and tons of jobs out there. And not only are they, most of them are paying more than minimum wage, which is $7.25 an hour. Some of them are paying up to $15 an hour for jobs that used to be closer to minimum wage. So if you work a minimum wage job for 20 hours a week, for six months a year, 26 weeks a year, that would give you 37 70. If you got a $15 an hour job and you worked 10 hours a week for six months, that's $3,900. And that's more than the cost of our study abroad programs. So you could earn enough to study abroad, either by getting a job or working extra hours. You can also, you know, get some money from your job, some money from a scholarship. You could set up a GoFundMe where you write a compelling letter you know, telling people how they should assist you in your educational goals, you know, by supporting your study abroad. You can ask for Christmas money, birthday money, graduation money, and then you can also save money. I know a, a lot of our students don't have a lot of money, but, you know, then that, they'll be talking to me about how they have no money, and I'm looking at them saying, well, hmm, you have piercings, you have tattoos, you have manicures, you have colored hair, you have the latest iPhone, you're drinking Starbucks, you have a bag from Chick-fil-A, you can cut down on what you spend, even if you spend very little. There are ways to put the money together if you really want to study abroad. And you just need to think about this as an investment in your future and in your education. There is data that shows that students who study abroad make more money across the course of their lifetime and also that you are more likely to be hired in the year after graduation. So I think the statistics are something like, like 95% of students who study abroad get hired in the first year after graduation, which is way higher than students who don't study abroad. So I think this next one is my last slide. So speaking to you know, some of the concerns students have other than money, um, a lot of students say, oh my gosh, I'm afraid to fly. I'm not going to get on an airplane. And I know that this is an irrational fear. So quoting statistics may not help. Um, but in 2013, more than 8 million people were flying every single day uh, with a total number of passengers of over 3 billion. 3 billion people fly every year. Uh, that's a lot of people. And if you hear about plane crashes, they hardly ever happen. I think it was the year 2018 where there were zero commercial airplane crashes. It is very rare that an airplane crashes. And in fact, the possibility of dying and the probability of dying in a car accident is one in a hundred, which is 200 times higher than the probability of dying in a plane crash. So if you drive to the school every day, and you're not afraid to drive to school, that is much more dangerous than getting on a plane and flying. We, we always have students who have never flown before. You know, I remember one got on their first trip on a plane was to China. The, the scary thing about flying is really just that it's something you've never done before. And it, it's normal human being behavior to have a bias toward the familiar. So anything in the unknown is always scary, but once you've done it once or twice or 500 million times, it's not scary at all. I mean, I really have less fear of flying than I do of driving a car. Um, you know, the other concern now is from COVID. I will tell you that um, if you go on one of our study abroad programs, you will be required to be fully vaccinated by the time uh, the program runs. So if you're not interested in being vaccinated, then uh, you won't be able to participate currently on our programs. But if you look at the odds of dying from COVID, if you are a young person and you are fully vaccinated, I won't say the probability is zero, but it is extremely, extremely low. Um, we do have COVID policies now. We have procedures in place. We have insurance that's going to cover your treatment for COVID if you got sick in another country. 
Uh, it, this is something, you know, we've been following for two years now and we have all the risk management in place in case something happens because of COVID. Uh, we only travel to countries where the healthcare system is robust and so that if, some, if you got sick that we know you would be able to be treated easily and well. So, you know, not anything to worry about. And the last thing on here is uh, terrorist attacks. I think this has gotten less, people are worrying about this less lately since COVID took over. Maybe it's because no one is traveling. But um, the chances of being killed in a terrorist attack are one in 20 million. So you're more likely to be killed by your own furniture uh, and more likely to die in a car accident, drown in the bathtub or in a building fire from a terrorist attack. Again, the statistics are very, 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 very low that any of these things will happen. I'll say the worst thing that has ever happened as far as this kind of thing, I had to take, I had to take a student to the emergency room one night in Florence because she had a boil on her thigh and they treated her and that was free. And then there was another woman, she was an older woman, a community member who was uh, on our trip to Scotland and she ended up having a hip fracture. And so she went to the hospital in Scotland, she had to stay behind, but they operated on her. She stayed in the hospital a week. The cost to her was zero. Uh, she went home to Baptist Hospital, got checked out and they said, you know, this was fantastic surgery, you couldn't have had it any better here. So those were the worst things that have ever happened and, and they all had happy endings. So like I said, I can't guarantee you that nothing bad will happen to you if you step out of your front door and nobody can guarantee that. But I can promise you that we are experts at doing this. We've been doing it for a long time. We know what we're doing. We have procedures in place in case of emergency and we will take care of you and you should not worry and you should do it because it's amazing and awesome and will change your life. So I think I'm going to stop sharing now and see if anyone has questions. Suzanne, I think that that was fabulous. Thank I you. mean, to think um, a student has the opportunity to travel. I mean, I think that is absolutely, I wish I had that opportunity. Uh, a question that um, I do see here, I'm going to kind of summarize it. With all a world tension that's going on now, how hard is it for you to kind of either establish or to maintain relationships with other countries to have this exchange? Well, a lot depends on the country. So, I mean, I went to Russia on a Fulbright program in 2016, and then Tim Gwillem, another one of our deans, went in 2019. And we've been doing virtual exchanges with Russia, and we had a study abroad program on the books to St. Petersburg. However, given the current political situation with Russia, that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> So, um, okay. So to finish answering that question before I look at the next one, um, it just depends. And I mean, you know, certainly there are some places we don't go, wouldn't go. We, you know, we have a whole list of things that we check out as far as the safety and the State Department travel advisories. And the travel advisories not only talk about COVID, but they give specific details about what you should be aware of in countries, if there's political unrest or crime, or if it's in a certain area. So, so we look at all of that very closely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's see in the chat, uh, Paris, interested in the Paris trip, education major, transfer the faculty to supply. Yes, this is a summer program. So yes, you can. Um, oh, this is the question I get all the time. I should have remembered to answer that. Well, first of all, other virtual abroad countries. So Ireland is the only one where we have like an official virtual study abroad. We also have a program through the Study Abroad Association 360 Global Learning Platform. That's a lot of words. Um, where you can do this 30 hour global scholars project where you go around to 11 different countries and it's sort of a 3D thing and you can zoom in and you take little quizzes so it's more self-guided, but we do have that as an option. But right now, um, 
and also in the past, we've done some exchanges through Global Solutions Sustainability Challenge, where we um, had a, a regular exchange with students at Jordan and Kurdistan. But right now, the only set virtual program is with Ireland or the 360 degree thing that you can do on your own time with 11 different countries. Are you allowed to go if you're under 18? Yes, depending on the program. So we are, a lot of colleges don't allow anyone under 18 to go. We allow you to go if you are 16 or 17 and you are early college or CCP, if you're a Davidson Davies student of some kind on most trips, unless for some reason the provider says you have to be 18. But right now, I can't think of a program that you have to be 18. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're good to go. Other questions? Is there a maximum number of students that can be can go through this exchange per semester or per year or for those coming to the United States? So yeah, that's a good question too. That, that depends on the program. So normally each program has a minimum number of students required to make it run. So since we always require at least two faculty staff, there's usually a minimum of 12 students and then we might cap it at a certain number. So for example, Japan is so, is so popular, we always ended up capping that usually at 24 because that's plenty of students for two people to handle. Um, usually our programs don't like fill overfill except for Japan. So, and again, it just kind of depends on each program and each provider as to how many students or, or participants are allowed to go. Thank you. Oh, I got direct message from Kaylin. Are there any upcoming partnerships for new study abroad experiences? Well, like I said, Russia was a new partner, but I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. We also have a partnership in Argentina with um, the Universidad Nacional de Villa Maria, where Veronica Pellegrino is from. And we have run a study abroad program there. Guilford Tech was going to lead that program this year, but they just postponed it because of COVID. Um, and Argentina's economy is a little dicey right now, too. So, I mean, that's another factor we look at. You know, there, I mean, it would be great to go to Argentina because your dollar would buy you a million things at this point, but not, not great for them in Argentina. So, um, right now, those are the only new partnerships I can think of. Uh, if I wanted to study abroad multiple times while I'm at Davidson Davy, am I allowed to? Yes, yes, yes. You can go on every trip you can afford. Uh, I encourage it. We have had students go on multiple programs. Uh, in fact, that, that's the only danger of study abroad is if you do it once, you might get addicted. And then you'll be like me and Christina Cannon there. You'll just travel all the time. <laughs> you want to go everywhere all the time. <laughs> okay. I have another question via direct message. Uh, I'm a junior in high school. I'm applying to colleges by the end of this year. If I apply to be a global scholar, will it show? So if you apply to be a global scholar now, you can put that on your application that you're in this global scholars program. You won't earn the distinction until you complete all the requirements. So yeah, I mean, you could go ahead and apply now. Um, I mean, technically you could probably finish it this semester, if you were like super dedicated, you could do the virtual Ireland program. You could attend the eight passport events and we'd have to see if you have the, enough globalized classes, but um, you can, you can put that you're in the program, but you won't actually earn the distinction on your transcript until you complete everything. But that was a good question. That can be confusing to people too. So we accept you don't you don't have to do anything before you become a global scholar there. You don't have to take a globalized course, attend a pass. You don't, there's nothing you have to do before you apply to be a global scholar. Once you apply, we accept you into the program. You're in the global scholars program. And once you complete all the requirements, you're officially a scholar of global distinction. If that makes sense.
Other questions? I like all these questions. Why don't you guys all put in the chat the country you're most interested in visiting? It can be one of our programs or it can be just some other place. We'll do a, we'll do a little poll here at the end. Where in the world would you most like to go? Italy, South Korea, friends. Anybody else? France? Speaking of France, I will mention that we have a we have another program to France this summer going to Bordeaux and it is full, which is why I didn't mention it. And it is a new partnership that is open to community college students all across North Carolina. So we had 20 slots and we are taking students from nine different uh, community colleges and I am personally leading that program, but we are, we are going to Bordeaux this summer as well as Paris. So, and that's, that's a program we hope will continue on into the future. Every summer, you'll have the possibility to go to Bordeaux. Okay, we got a lot of France, South Korea. No one else wants to tell me where they want to go. One for Italy, one for South Korea, two for France. Thailand and Iceland. Iceland's definitely on my list. Croatia's on my list. Turkey is on my list. Chile. I've already been a lot of places, but those are the ones I still have left. <laughs> All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I will. Um, oh, Finland and Norway. Yeah. Scandinavia. I want to see the Northern Lights. Greece. We have Greece coming in. Yeah. Those sound good. But if there aren't any other questions, I'll turn it back over to William. And I, I thank you for your attention and for being here this evening. Suzanne, thank you again so much. And I encourage everyone, if you have any additional questions or if you'd like to visit our campus and take a campus tour, stop by to see Suzanne and the International Center. I mean, I, I promise you, you, you will love it 100% and really want, make you want to enroll at Davis and David Community College. So again, thank you for the exposure uh, that you provide each of us, even as staff. Uh, was you sharing information, allowing us to come by to kind of take part in a lot of your events. It, it really means a lot and it's very educational as well. So I really thank you. Okay. And again, we